Hi friends, welcome to Crack Grid. We are back with yet another very important lecture from your current affairs series and in this part we are going to cover current affairs ESI from the 1st and 2nd October 2021. Right? So let's begin with the first news article. 17th India-Australia Joint Ministerial Commission. Okay, so there was a ministerial conference of the uh, India and the Australia, right? So why this is important? This is important because this is happening before 12th ministerial conference of the WTO, right? Scheduled to be held at the end of this year. So whatever issue that India and Australia feels are, that is important to both the nation, right? that they should take up in the WTO in, in the world scenario they have discussed in this ministerial commission right so not many thing is out so let us see some details so key issue includes the expeditious negotiation of the bilateral CECA resolution of tax related issue faced by the Indian software firm in Australia right so there are few issues uh, faced by the Indian software firm in the Australia that is the issue that was discussed right nothing nothing much in this so, only thing that we need to know is 12th WTO Ministerial Conference in Geneva, Switzerland that is going to happen at the end of this year, right? So, let's move forward with the next news article that is index of the 8 core industry. So, what are the 8 core industry? So, I hope you would be knowing this answer. So, these are the 8 core sector, coal, natural gas, refinery products, steel, cement and electricity industry right so what happened 133.5 in august 2021 which increased by 11 so this is the point 11.6 percent provisional as compared to the index of august 2020 so when when it is compared with the august last year the index has been increased by 11.6 percent so this shows that the economy is growing right and eight core sectors are very important because these are the, these are considered as the growth engine you can say, right? So when this sectors grow, it is bound that the other sector will grow. See, it's, it's simple. So when you see sales of cement going up, this means that there is some asset creation in terms of house, railways, roads, because cements are used in development, uh, development of the roads and buildings, right? The infrastructure, when you see the production of steel going up it does say that the automobile industry is booming so whatever industry that is using steel as one of the raw material is booming that is why steel consumption has gone up same as refinery products right so more more and more uh, sales of petrol and diesel shows that increased sales of car as well because who is going to consume them the cars the automobiles in the road so be it commercial and personal that is altogether a different factor right so then electricity the more consumption of electricity see household electricity doesn't contribute much okay household household electricity does will not impact this 11.6 percent in month on month right so it will it will be very very minute but what says is that the factory so see uh, if, if a manufacturing uh, factory is running on its full fledged, right? So it will consume heavy electricity. So that does shows that the sector is the other sector is booming. So have you now you have understood the importance of eight core industries? Then final growth rate of index of eight core industries for May 2020-21 is revised to 16.4 percent from the provisional level. It was given as 16.89. Right? So this was important. Let's move to the next one okay so let us see it graphically as well so if you see month on month what has happened to august right so july it was 9.9 9.3 16.4 so the final data of may has come rest everything is provisional right so in april you see 62.6 percent because the economy has just opened after the lockdown okay after the local lockdown that's why the boom is 62 uh, so no uh, so this is 62.6 is because of you know that low base effect low base effect that we discussed so if you don't know what is low base effect so you can watch our one of the video in i think gdp video 
right where we have discussed about the different organization giving the gdp data and we have discussed what is low base effect so the 62.6 percent is not you know uh, maybe the number the percentage point is way high but it is showing high just because of low base effect you can watch that video we'll understand this economic jargon let's move to the next news article fintech adoption rate right so what is fintech about fintech fintech is made up of two words finance technology financial technology phone pay ptm right then bhim upi all these are what fintech company means financial technology company so at the second global fintech fest 2020-21 through video conferencing 87 percent India has the highest fintech adoption rate in the world against the global average of 64%. Very important point in terms of your objective and in terms of your prescriptive as well. Okay, So India's UPI interface has participation of 224 banks and recorded 2.6 billion transactions worth over $68 billion and highest ever more than 3.6 billion transactions in August 2021. Okay. Over 2 trillion transactions processed by EPS, Allah Remember Payment System. Investment inflow in the, fin in the fintech sector is what? 10 billion since it started in 2016. Has a huge potential to up the game. Still, the potential is up because why? You see, the Paytm IPO is coming and the hype in the market. So, it says, yes, the, the word is absolutely right. So, it has a huge potential to up the game. Right? Then, it will simultaneously enhance customer experience. Your strength will be augmented by the world's third largest startup ecosystem, which is Hungry for Code. So India is the world's largest, third largest startup ecosystem. India is today one of the fastest growing fintech market with more than 2100 fintechs. A lot of Indian fintechs market are unicorns. So who are unicorns? These are very big companies. And India's market is currently valued at $31 billion and expected to grow at 84 billion by 2020-25. So you see from 31 billion at present to 84 billion by 2025. So the growth is way, way higher, right? right? How? Because of the Indian startup, right? And the kind of technology they use, the kind of approach they come into the market. See, UPI is something you can absolutely go cashless in India. Now, every hook and corner, every small to big shop, you will find at least if you if you roam 10 shops, you will find 9 shops accepting UPI. That is the level of penetration. So, you cannot find this anywhere in the world, even not in the America. Right. So, that is the level of uh, digital or transition that have happened because of this fintech companies. Right. Now, let's move to the next news article that is DG suction. What is this? Ministry of Labor and Employment, Shri Bhupinder Yadav launched. Who launched it? Bhupinder Yadav, phase one material. A digital skill program to enhance employability of the youth. Objective number one, by imparting digital skill. How? By imparting digital skill. Data required in increasingly technology driven era. Through DigiSuction initiative, free of cost training in digital skills, including basic skill as advanced computing skill will be provided to more than 3 lakh youth in first year. Very important, I am marking it. The job seeker can access training through National Career Service Portal. Okay, then the initiative gives priority to job seekers of semi urban areas belonging to the disadvantaged communities, including those who have lost their job due to COVID 19 pandemic. Under the DG section initiative, there are basically three training types. Very, very important. Mark up the things. Digital skills, self-based learning, VIRT mode training, virtual instructor led and IIT mode training, instructor led, right? The IIT training, which is in-person training, would be conducted at the Model Career Center and National Career Service Center for STHC across the country. Not, not very much important. So whatever is important, I have marked and said throughout the lecture. Let's move to the next news article, that is Webring Gram Sabha Dashboard. Very, very important. Very, very, very important. This one. The Union Minister for Panchayati Raj and Rural Development, so ARD section, okay. Sri Giriraj Singh launched what? People's Plan Campaign 2021, Sapka, Sapki Yojana, Sapki Vikas, and Vibrant Gram 
Sabha dashboard. He also released a booklet on people plan campaign 2021 for the preparation of plans for the financial year 2020. The 10th issue of Gram Today Sankalp magazine. There are 31.6 lakh elected panchayat representatives across the country in which 40.53 lakhs are women. Okay, not much information available. It will come up in the near future. This is the thing that you need to remember out of it, right? Let's move to the, uh, the, the graphical part of it. See, how this G, uh, GP, GP creation is done, okay? is coordinated by whom? Department of Panchayati Raj at state level. Okay. And Department of Panchayati Raj help process the implementation of following activity in the time bound manner. Now, how does this work? Look. Commencement of people plan on 2nd October it has done. You can read it through. Special Kram Sabha. This is going to happen in the future. Then, approved felicitator feedback upload in GPDP portal mandate for plan update. Then it would move to mission and to their survey verification. Okay. Then creation activities in e Gram Sabha and e Gram Swaraj application. Then plan gets approval. Then implement it gets implementation. Then expenditure reporting of the activities. What has been done? This is Webering Gram Sabha dashboard. Right. So let's move to the next news article which is first green bond very important from the finance section ntpc national thermal power corporation okay ntpc renewable energy limited rel a hundred percent subsidiary of ntpc okay so there is a ntpc sorry ntpc and a sister concern is ntpc rel renewable energy limited has signed its first green term loan. So, when you hear green term loan, green bond means related to what? It's related to energy. Right? It's related to the consumption or the choice of energy that people choose to consume. Right? So, basically it's a difference between choosing a uh, petrol or diesel car versus an electric car. Right? So, now you understood what is green term. A rupees 500 crore at every competitive rate with a tenor of 15 years with Bank of India on 29th November 2021. So, for whom? 470 megawatt solar project in Rajasthan and 200 megawatt solar project in Gujarat. So, RJ and GJ. This is something you need to remember. For RJ, it's 470. For GJ, it's 200 megawatt. Right? You need to remember this. Let's move to the next news article that is Bio Naman Program. Simple thing that you need to remember that the Vice President of India, okay, on International Day of Elderly Person, which is celebrated on 1st October every year, has launched two things, right? Number one, number two, what is SAGE? So, you know, SAGE portal, you already know it, but what is this thing that the, uh, yeah, the Vice President of India has launched, okay? And Sacred portal. While the SAGE portal designed by the Ministry of Social Justice, and empowerment. So, who designed by whom? Minister of Social Justice and Empowerment. What is Sacred Portal? Will connect the senior citizen with job provided in the private sector. The Vice President placed this portal as a timely intervention by the Ministry. So, this is for the uh, people who are senior or older people, right? Who, who are in search of job or maybe in need of job. So, the name of the program is Bio Naman Program. Bio Naman Program. Remember it as Bio Naman Elderly. And then you will remember Sage, Sacred, Sage is a portal, okay. So it's about caring the uh, old, old age people. Sacred is a portal that, that is related to their job in the private sector, right. So let's move to the next piece of article that is performance assessment of district hospitals. So who has released this? The think tank, the premier think tank of India, Niti Ayurveda released a performance and assessment report of the district hospitals in India. So see, this is a very, very good step, right? So every district has a government hospital, right? And giving them, them an opportunity to perform in the national level and compete in the national level through this kind of initiative, obviously their service is going to increase, okay? Now, 
The report is an outcome of collaborative with the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and WHO India. Very, very important. So it's not Niti Aayog alone did it. Niti Aayog plus Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and World Health Organization India. Okay, you need to remember this. The National Accreditation Board for Hospital and Healthcare Provider, a constituent board of the Quality Council of India conducted the on-ground validation. So who conducted the on-ground validation? The National Accreditation Board for Hospitals. In this line, you can read about it. The assessment framework covers 10 key performance indicators, very important, across the domain of structure and output. A total of, total of 707 district hospital across the state and union territory participated in the assessment. How much? 707, 10 key performance. Okay. The health manager uh, information system, HIMS data for the year 1718 has been used as the baseline. So for comparison, there has to be a base because when you compare, you need a base, right? Like when we see a children, we say your height has grown up. So we compare it with a previous height, right? So that is the baseline. So 2017-18 data has been used as a baseline. The framework, framework classifies hospital in three broad categories. Very important. Small hospital less than or equal to 200 bed. Okay. Mid size 201 to 300 beds. Large hospital more than 300 bed. Simple. Then. The report documents some of the best practice of the top performing hospital in each of the hospital category across 10 indicators. Right then, overall 75 district hospitals across 24 states and union territory emerged as top performer on indicators, ranging from availability of beds, medical and paramedical staff. So now, let me give you an thing to do, right? So see, in the video, what I have not put is which district has topped it. This district has come second. Okay. So which is the state that has majority of the district coming in the top parameters. So this is the something that you need to read yourself, find and get it in the comment section. Okay. So let's move to the next piece of article that is expert committee for sustainable finance. Okay. Not very much important uh, in terms of everything. Remember the name. Shri CK Misra, former secretary to the government of India. It is under him, the expert committee has been formed by the International Finance Service Center Authority, right, for sustainable finance. Let's move to the next news article, it is current account surplus. Now, what is current account? You remember in the GDP data, we have read about the X minus M. X minus M is basically current account, right, export. We will we'll compare what is the incoming and outward going. Okay. How much we have bought from the other country and how much we have sold to other countries. So that is the trade that we do and that is related to current account. Right. So India's current account balance posted a surplus of 6.5 billion 0.9% of the GDP in quarter 1 FY 2022 as against deficit of 8.1 billion percent of the GDP in financial year 2021. Then, the current account surplus was 19.1 billion dollar, 3.7 percent of the GDP in financial year 21 according to RTA. Right? Then, the surplus in quarter ended June 2021, that is financial year 2022 quarter 1. Okay? April, May, June was due to contraction in the strict deficit for goods to 30 billion from 41 billion in quarter 4 FY 2021 and increase in net service received. The trade deficit for goods was 11.8 billion in financial year 2021. Right? So let's move to the next news article that is fiscal deficit. Data on the fiscal deficit. The union government's fiscal deficit as a proportion of the budget estimate. So, fiscal deficit is calculated budget estimate, right? Fell on an 18-year low as 31.1%. In the first five months of the current financial year. In absolute term as well, the gap between the center's expenditure and receive narrowed to Rs. 4.7 trillion during April-August 2021 from 8.7 trillion in the corresponding period so see this this can be uh, dubbed as as the central government is spending now again on the other hand central government has received the 
very big amount from the Reserve Bank of India as well, right? So basically, you can compare everything, right? So there are many data points that you need to understand. So I hope you already know what is fiscal deficit. And if you do not know, go ahead and watch the video where we have explained what is fiscal deficit, right? In the budget video, we have explained you all the terms that is related to union budget, the fiscal deficit, revenue deficit, capital expenditure, everything. Go ahead and watch that video. Then, so you will find how and why this happened, right? So pause the video, go through it once, you will understand, okay? So you see the tax collection for the government is very good. So tax aided the government almost 60% more revenue at rupees 6 trillion than ever corresponding pre-COVID level of 1920. Okay. So you can also tell this that from the taxes the government have received way higher amount than estimated. So that's why the, the deficit is very narrow. So let's move ahead with the next news article. Rupees 4,400 crore initiative in ECGC Limited. Right? So, government approves 4,400 crore initiative in ECGC Limited in five years to provide the support to the exporter as well as men. So, IPO is going to come for the ECGC. That is an 88,000 crore rupees. They, they uh, look to uh, get through the IPO and also additional export of 5.2 over a period of five years. Of the total amount, 500 crore will be infused now and another 500 crore will be infused in the financial year 2023, right? So, recently the government has released 56,027 crore in September 2021 to liquidate all pending areas. So, everything is being cleared, right? Then, nothing more important in this. So, let's move forward with the next news article that is Ujala 2.0. The Ministry of Petroleum, so Ujala 2.0 so means there is 1.2. This is related to LPG gas connection. So, what happened in 2.0, this is all launched very recently, right? In the coming section, do mention the uh, launch date of Ujala 2.0, okay? This was already discussed in the union budget video as well. The Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas has got 10 million valid application under the second leg of Pradhan Mantri Ujala Yojana, Ujwala Yojana PM UY 2.0. With this, the target for distributing 10 million new connection in the budget 2021 has been saturated. Look, very important. Not even the entire year has completed. The government scheme target has been achieved. Okay, 10 million new connection. So, Ministry of Petroleum has this 10 million valid application means it has been saturated, the target is completed. So to make this leg of the program even more affordable, the first LPG cylinder refill and hot plate amounting to rupees 1800 for both is free under PM 2.0. In in 1.0, it was payable, but in 2.0, it is given free, means 1800 rupees, they don't have to give it, right? So this is in addition to rupees 1600 upfront amount that is waived for PM 2.0 sub beneficiaries. The target to release 80 million deposits for free LPG collection to the deprived household was achieved on September 7, 2019. So, deposit free LPG connection to in, in uh, phase 1, right? In 1.4. Achieved on when? September 7, 2019. Okay, then according to official data, very important line. Over 83 million connection have been distributed under the first phase of PMUY trade act. This led to an increase in India's LPG coverage from 62% in May 1, 2016 to 99.8% as on April 1st, 2020-21. So very few are left. So means you can say this scheme is a huge, huge success. Even at this point, it is success. 99.8% is very commendable. Then. Now, which state has stopped? The Bihar has stopped in PMUY 2.0. Bihar number one, West Bengal number two, Gujarat number three. Right? Let's move to the next news article, second installment of SDRF. Right? So, this is under the 
home ministry, right? SDR. So the home ministry has approved the second installment that has to be released to the 23 states amounting to rupees 7274.40 crores. Nothing more to know about it. Let's move to the next Nawami Gange transfer. So you know there is a government scheme called Nawami Gange. What is this? Do mention, do some of you mention in the comment section so that other people know. Right. So since we are not discussing the uh, current affair, we won't get deep into it. But yes, that's the government scheme. And on the 37th executive committee meeting, the Chacha Choudhury has been has been selected as the mascot for this Naomi Gangi program. Right. So let's move to the next over five crore tap water connection provided. So this is data completely for the Jalji One mission. Again, Jaljeevan mission has been covered in the government scheme. You may go and watch that video. It was announced in August 2019. So just over a period of 25 months, over 5 crore families have been provided with the tap water. Right? So nothing more about it. But this line to uh, the point number 2 and point number 3 has been put specifically for you to go uh, read it. Because Jaljeevan mission is very important and very widely discussed. And when this data is coming, so you may expect a question and also for descriptive part i have we have put some details which you can pause the video and go once to, uh, go it, go once you will get so this is the static part of jaljeevan mission right so let's move to the next news of article that is 50000 women shg members as pc business correspondents how to commemorate the azadi ka amrit mahotsav 50000 women shg members are dedicated to the nation as Business correspondent Sakhi in the rural area during the week, the date, date is not important. So this business correspondent will provide door respect, a door step service in every gram panchayat. So this is the news for your descriptive, not for the um, objective, right? The initiative has been named as the one GP, one BC Sakha, one gram panchayat, one business correspondent Sakhi mission. It proposed to deploy at least one business correspondent in the rural area by the end of 2324. More than 50,000 SHG women who have been trained and certified. So, capacity building program is also important, right? Which Ministry of Rural Development is already doing. So, there are many things that Ministry of Rural Development is doing. So, you can do one thing. There is a video for Ministry of Rural Development. Okay, go ahead and watch this video. In that video, we have covered everything about MORD, right? Starting from why that is set up, the objective to all these schemes where we have discussed everything, right? So just 40 to 45 minutes, if you watch it, that will be very, very fruitful because it, that will be helpful for your ARD and ESI as well. So do not miss to watch that. Then let's move to the next news article that is Clean India Program. Union Minister for Youth Affairs and Sports Sri Anurag Thakur participated in cleanliness drive on the launch of Nation Blight Clean India campaign for Prayagraj in UP. This mega initiative, 75 lakh kg based, mainly plastic waste, will be collected. Okay, so Prayagraj UP, Sri Anurag Thakur has launched it, where 75 lakh kg waste is estimated to be collected from. 6 lakh villages of 744 districts across the country through the network of whom Nehru Yuva Kendra Sangatan related to youth club and national service scheme institution. Okay. So, let's move to the next one. Swachh Bharat Mission 2.2 and Amrit 2.0 the government of India has launched it. The Prime Minister has launched it. Right. So, let's move to the next news article that is Drone Spring. So very important when it comes to agriculture. So there is a field trial with a helicopter, okay, where spraying of nano liquid area was conducted in where Bhavnagar, Gujarat, okay, in presence of Union Minister of Chemical and Fertilizer and Health and Family Welfare, Sri Mansuk Mandavia, the new minister in the in the new cabinet of the Prime Minister, which has been reshuffled very recently, right? The trial was attended by a large number of farmers. This demonstration of spring liquid nano urea was drone by drone was undertaken by IFCO. Sorry, I think I told helicopter. No, that was drone, right? A company involved in developing the nano urea. So with this, we have come to the end of this lecture. We wish you very good luck for your examination. Thank you so much for watching this video.
Goodbye.